Hi everybody, this is Steve. Good afternoon and thanks for joining. In this session, we're going to be looking at Unity Agent Web. So it's a web application that's got nearly as much functionality as our um, agent for Windows that we've had for a number of years. So with that, let's just set the scene in terms of what we're hoping to share with you today and what we're going to cover. Uh, this will only be a 20 minute webinar, so we're just going to be quite high level. Firstly, we want to talk about uh, maybe where the web apps themselves fit in terms of our overall strategy and our overall development queue. Uh, so firstly, when we're talking about the web apps, as I mentioned, these apps will run in any of the main browsers. So they're going to run in Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and also Safari. So the last point I think is an important one because it now means that we've got exactly the same functionality and UI sitting across uh, across those Mac users as well as, uh, as Windows users. Um, so the strategy for us really is that um, we're going to be developing web apps. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got desktop and agent that we're looking at today finished. Uh, we're going to be developing web apps for our other products, and they're going to sit side by side with the Windows products. So we're not looking at uh, a replacement here for the Windows solution. We're going to have Windows versions of all the apps, supervisor reception, etc., and web versions. So why are we doing this and sort of where's the fit for this? And I think really it comes down to uh, some of the desktop support issues. The feedback we've had is from a lot of the service providers is that uh, the thin clients, you know, browser-based solutions, the smaller footprint, it's a smaller support overhead, and it's the preferred deployment model. So that's what we're looking at uh, today. Um, so, yeah, so they're going to coexist. Uh, at the end of this session, we've got a, a little matrix where we're just going to sort of show how the functionality stacks up between, say, Agent Web that we're looking at today and the Windows Agent. Okay, One of the reasons we're always going to have uh, both versions is, and as you'll see on the slide, uh, there's more things we can do with uh, .NET Windows client. It's just a tighter fit with the OS. Uh, it, it's just, there's more scope. We're able to do more things. Um, so we can touch on some of those some of those things at the end. Um, architecture overview: How does this thing sort of hang together, and what's the requirement on your solution, your Broadworks platform, to make it work? The first thing is to start with uh, that this is the web apps that is they're supported on um, Broadworks R21 uh, SP1. So 21.1. Um, the reason for that is is on that um, on that release, the version of CTI that we're using to build these apps uh, is available. So 21.1 upwards, um, and I'll show you as well in terms of the, uh, the you know where the where the apps are connecting to the browser address and everything else. We can talk about what's required there, but I think the key message is that there's no real overheads on your platform in terms of you're not deploying servers or anything else. So very much like the Windows solution. You know, it's a cloud-based solution. It's an overlay for you as a Broadsoft provider. So it's, it's pretty easy to get out, we think. Um, functionality walkthrough. We're going to do that live. I'm going to toggle across to the app in a minute. And just, uh, again, we're not going to do a, a super deep dive on this, to be honest. Um, we're just going to recap, really, what we've got, what the functionality, what Broadsoft features we're exposing, uh, the Broadsoft standard and the Broadsoft premium call centers, so um, Venus inbound and outbound, all that kind of stuff, join and leave queues, ACD, making yourself unavailable, normal stuff like that, alerting supervisors, all that good stuff. Those are Broadsoft features. There's a few things that we've got on top of that, um, which is the ability to, you know, um, have a personal award for some stats and some other little touches we've put on top of the of the stock broad soft functionality, which again is the same model we've got with the Windows agent product that we've got. Um, so that's cool. As I mentioned, we're just going to wrap up to make sure there's sort of no ambiguity about what we've got in the Windows product and the web product. This actually touches on a bit of a on a bit of a roadmap discussion as well. We'll show you what's coming up, um, you know, as far as these products are concerned. And then we're going to wrap up with a Q&A. So if you want to use the uh, toolbar on the right-hand side of the screen, you can um, ask a question, uh, and we'll come on to those at the end. So uh, let me just uh, let me just show you a quick orientation of the screen. I'm going to go on to a live one, but sometimes these screen grabs are good because of, there are a lot of things happening. Um, some call control at the top, very straightforward. Um, ACD availability on the left, um, wrap-up buttons, etc. Personal wallboard. Familiar to most people on this call, I would have thought, because it's uh, a way to show uh, the agent um, stats, basically. So broken down, 
by the course members that are a member of, uh, their own stats and the overall Q stats. So we'll configure that and play around with that a little bit. Um, and then we've got the active core window. The, the, inter the layout of this interface is the same as the Windows one. So I think most people will be familiar with this, uh, but really what it's showing me is it's showing me the current calls I've got up, ACD calls, inbound calls, everything else. I'm managing my extension. Uh, below that, I've got a, a contacts, a busy lab field panel, call logs, and a voicemail tab, and everything else. On the right-hand side of the screen, I've got uh, the instant message window, which I can have nailed up. I can toggle it on and off, basically, to nail it up. Uh, and it's got drag and drop and everything else. So I think um, with that, I'm going to I'm going to look at uh, the app itself. So just to tie back to start with to the the architecture point I mentioned. So this is the this is the uh, address. So this is um, a web server in our core that um, all of the thin clients are going to connect to. And then it's uh, from there that it's going to connect to the host boardworks platform. So if you are using an ACL or a whitelist or anything like that, um, then that's really the only thing that you need to do on your end is to uh, you know allow traffic from from our core basically. And so here we are. So now we're looking at um, Unity agents. So I think um, as I mentioned, I've got my unavailable codes. Um, if I click on unavailable, that is, I can choose an unavailable code from boardworks. Leave myself in available because I want to make some chess calls coming in. Um, these buttons aren't lit up because they're not live, namely because I haven't got a call up at the minute, so I can't put something on hold, I can't answer something, etc. Um, we've got a couple of things here. We've got the call recording button. Uh, again, there isn't a call up. If I can right click this, I can toggle the call recording. So this is the, the, the dependency here is using the call recording service in Broadsoft. Uh, so I can choose the way the call recording behaves. And if I did have a call up, I could pause and resume it. Um, a couple of things just to talk about for setup, and those are, if I go into settings, so like the Windows version um, of the app, you, you uh, just need to put in the host uh, platform details, and then if they are running the call center to populate the personal wallboard that we're looking at, um, I need to put in the, 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 the password from the call center instance in Broadworks. That's really it. And then here we are. And then this will populate here, this personal wallboard. So I think what I'll do is I'll just make a couple of calls in. Before I do that, um, I've got some statistics here um, and how I can choose which stats I want to have. Oh, there we are. Somebody's jumped the gun. <laughs> Good to see they're all listening. Um, but basically, yeah, see, there's a bunch of calls coming in. So what I can do is uh, I can just pick up one of those calls. Um, um, where's my phone? Yeah, so as you can see, the personal wallboard is showing me uh, that there's, there's calls in queue. I can also optionally see um, the, I can optionally configure the app to show queued calls, so which I've got turned on in this example. So if I had three or four calls, this active window here is just going to slide down, and it's going to see, it's going to make me, it's going to show all the calls are in, in, in queue actually. So here we go. So I've got a call up here. If I wanted to make another call to um, to Jim. Oh, that was Jen. If I make a call to, um, so I could drag this out here and just make a. Uh, let's see if Jen can take this call, and then uh, what I might do is add Stephen. If I just add him into this conversation, and get them all there, break them all up. If I want to make a call out to Jen, so I've got this uh, this ACD call has come in. So it's coming from a remote party. It's coming to this call center here. So the, that's the name of the, the ACD from Broadsoft, of course. The call is active. Call recording is turned on in this example. So you can see the call's recording. The call recording button here is showing me that I've got a live call up and it is being recorded. And the button is toggled to pause. So if I press the button now, I can pause the recording, as you'll see. Toggle the recording back on. So if I finish taking the credit card payment or whatever the use case is, toggle it back on. Now what I'm going to do is I want to get one of these. I'm going to get this call and I want to give it to one of these guys. Uh, I'm going to um, um, I'm going to make another call out here to Jen. So if I drag her up to the active call window, that's going to open up another outbound call. And then if she picks up the call. I can then transfer, so I can transfer the remote party to Jen. But she has now, so I can go transfer that remote party to Jen, and that's going to uh, just, just clear that call down. 
uh, or I can, of course, hit conference. So basically, the call control, as you see, we've now, I've now set up a uh, three-way call here. So the call control is very simple to the Windows app. Um, it's all drag and drop, very easy to manage. Um, and the agent can clearly differentiate between incoming ACD calls, which calls are going to be coming in for, bring in other parties, message people, message multiple people, um, drag calls around and everything else. Okay, so uh, I can drag this call up here. So if I dra if I if I've sent uh, a message out to three or four people saying, hey, this caller wants to talk about X Y Z product, and then Steve says yes, send the call to me. I can push the call to, to Steve, or you know, it's a, you can basically intelligently manage calls. Let's drop that call out. Okay, and drop that out. One of the things that we do support that is that is particularly important for a for an agent for a call center environment is that. Um, agents typically use hot desking or flexible seating, so we support that. So if I just go in here, for example, I can see connect to a device. As you see here, flexible seating. Uh, I'm not connected at the moment, but I can easily associate, uh, I can guest onto a host phone. Okay. Um, contacts and call logs, so I can do a lookup, not specifically call center functionality, but this lets me look up through the group so I can find other people basically, bring them all in. So if I want to ring Charles, Charles, if I wanted to ring Charles, and I can bring him in. Um, and I can also see what my colleagues are doing. So this will also show their ACD state as well. And, and I can also see my voicemail. So if I have got, uh, let's have a look, voicemail. So yeah, so the web apps, uh, again, this is not specifically an ACD feature, but I can see um, voicemail basically. I can play the voicemails back or I can delete them and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to pull it out of the pop server as well. So that's not just deleting it locally from this, this uh, tab in my Unity, it's, um, it's you know it's unified as well. Okay, so touching on some of the um, specific ACD functionality, if I've got a call up, I can escalate it to a supervisor, uh, and how I do that is actually I haven't got a call up. If I could just take a call into this call center, it would be great. Oh, here we go. So if I've got a call up now, I can. Um, Here we go. So here we go. I can uh, leave the queue, etc. I can push the call to a queue. So maybe they've come into the support number and they want to go to the sales queue. I can easily push into the sales queue. Or here we are. I can, I've got um, escalation and emergency escalation. So we support escalation. As I mentioned before, this supervisor's list is going to show me the supervisors that are assigned to the call center in Broadsoft. So I can easily go down and I can see Chris as a supervisor and I can IM and say, listen, can you help? This has gone wrong. Uh, so supervisor escalation, we're all there. Um, uh, we've, we've talked about the statistics. I can also see the calls in queue. That's that's toggleable on and off. Not everybody wants that. If it's a busy call center, maybe you don't want to have that on. Maybe if it's if it's a smaller informal SMB type call center, maybe it adds a lot of value to that customer if they can see calls in queue, so they can actually visualize that. Hey, now's not a good time to take a break. Um, what I am seeing here is that uh, that the calls I mentioned. I can see um, some stats, some headline stats, and the personal warboard. Uh, I can minimize that to some, a summary view if I want to. Uh, if I just show you quickly how to toggle this information, what's displayed in here. Uh, so again, my statistics is my stats for the day. Okay, These are reset at midnight. Overall queue stats is uh, the call center as a whole. So there's a one call on queue here. So I can see that. It's a um, call coming into the Kakapo sales line. Um, but basically, if I just jump into settings here, uh, tools, uh, settings. Now, if I check, click on uh, columns, um, columns. Where are there it is columns. So there we are, agent column and call center column. So if I've in my call center column, I've got calls in queue and a few other things. Uh, I could add another one in. Um, busy overflows, calls answered. And that's a pretty cool stat. We should have that really. Set some thresholds for that. Um, and I can choose to set the threshold for all the call centers or just a particular call center. So. Um, obviously, if you're if you've got um, you know different sort of stat thresholds or different behaviours and different calling experiences, then you can you can take customise the threshold levels and the colour codes to suit you know what's happening with each particular queue. Let's just go and jump put something in here. Um, Car for sales. Let's just add in. If it's if there's no calls answered, that's green. If there's one, two, three, there we go. So that's just how that's going to work. Um, save, 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 and then um, 
I didn't save it, did I? No. Uh, sorry, my mistake. What would have happened if I clicked save instead of cancel was that the other stat would have populated. I'm not going to go back in because I think it's very clear you guys can see what's happened here. Um, so these things can take up. This resets at midnight. Uh, and that's this has been a big win. I've got to, got to be honest. This the ability to have right on their desktop the agent being able to actually see what's happening in the call center is is, is, is naturally fairly important information. Um, so with that, um, that's really a run through of most of the functionality. We have also got. Um, DNS as well. So if you are running, uh, we've actually got two DNS features. Well, I've got a matrix I'm going to come on to in a moment, but just while I'm in the application itself, um, this is not a uh, premium call center. I've just right clicked in here. Um, and as you can see, I can escalate the call. Um, if this was a premium call center that I had called and um, there was disposition codes, then I can assign the disposition code. So we support disposition codes on uh, Broadworks Agent Premium. The other thing on premium we support is inbound and outbound DNS. So inbound DNS just means that uh, I can I can see the alpha tag. So if it's coming into a DNS queue, um, then I can basically see you know what the name of the DNS is. So for example, if it's um, you know would you, if, if there's a sales queue, can't talk about sales, and then we had different DNS set up for what, one of the DNS was dashboard sales, one of the DNS was reception sales. I'm displayed that uh, within the the two columns. So Inbound DNS, yes. Outbound DNS um, means that uh, I can also uh, choose to make a call uh, outbound and present the outbound CLI. So basically using the outbound DNS functionality again in the Broadworks Call Center Agent Premium, we support both of those uh, user experiences. Um, and so really, I think in that way we support all of the other broad software you know, all of the expected Broadsoft functionality that you want to access, the customers want to use, that's all available within this web app now. Okay. Um, so, uh, with that, I'm going to go back to the slide, and I think we're just going to look at a couple of things, which is going to be the matrix here, and then we're just going to wrap up with a Q&A. Um, so again, I don't think the purpose is to go through this table really in any detail. I think we just want to show, see these two columns here, are um, this is the Broadsoft features. So the Broadsoft features um, agent and premium, as I just mentioned, the disposition codes and DNS really, that's the key differences. I'm sure most people know that. Makes no difference from uni point of view, we support all of them anyway. Um, just to touch on a couple of things that that are coming or, or some differences between the Windows and the web apps. Um, one of them is um, forced disposition code. That's in Windows at the moment. That's uh, it's not forced in, in the web app, but that's that's coming. Uh, we've got templates in, in the um, Windows apps. <clears throat> uh, then they're coming for the web app as well. So just to recap on what those what those are, there's templates. So it's a way of configuring one user and then making a template. So look, look all the columns we just looked at, um, uh, setting all the thresholds, the color codes, turning on and off various functionality. Uh, you know, basically, you don't want to retool that if you've gone and sold 300 agents. You want to do it once and then just um, template it out automatically. That sits in the uh, Unity Cloud, the Kakapo Cloud, and that just gets rolled to all users in the group or enterprise. That's coming for the web apps. It's been out in Windows for a long time now. Um, yeah, and that's and that's really the key differences. There's a, there's a couple of uh, things um, that we have seen a lot of deployment in the course in the space on the Windows clients. Uh, CRM integration is one of them. Um, so that's a way of profiling calls and queue against Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics and things like that, as well as doing screen pops and basic stuff like that. It also journals everything into this into the CRM. A lot of cool functionality doesn't exist. It's not an add-on option that's available for the web apps now. So the web apps is just uh, using all the Broadsoft features. Some of the other um, Unity-specific stuff that we've built uh, as an overlay, that's coming as part of a sort of a phase two. Um, but all near-term near phase two. Um, so I think with that, if there is any questions, now's a good time to um, ask. Um, okay, I have one. <clears throat> I got one question about uh, asking about the contact center. So we've got some new contact center solutions. Uh, some omnichannel solutions. So really quickly, um, we're adding to Broadsoft, we're adding uh, web chat, callback, um, Twitter queues, and email queues is going to be announced very soon. Um, 
how does that work with the web apps? It doesn't at the moment. Um, the plan absolutely is to make the uh, all of our contact center functionality available in the web apps. Again, that's not available right now. It's just um, Broadsoft um, ACD and Broadsoft hosted PBX for the Unity desktop at the moment. Uh, another question about the licensing. Is it a separate license or not? It's a, it's a separate license. Um, so that's a, yeah, it's a, it's a separate license basically. So there's Unity Agent Windows as a license and Unity Agent Web as a license. It's the same price, there's no pricing difference, but it's a, it's a separate license. So that's been split out. Okay, cool. Um, everybody, that's the questions. Uh, so that was good, no tricky ones, we like that. I appreciate everybody's time. Um, if there's anything else you want to pick up offline, please reach out to us, and uh, we can set up some trials or uh, you know anything that comes to you. We can we can we can revisit. Appreciate your time. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye bye.